Grim as the mounting toll from coronavirus may be, there are also more and more survivors, our Seth Doan among them. Way too many hospital visits during this crisis have been a one-way trip. The patient is dying alone. There is no family nearby. Dr. Michael Sag has seen it. So has his son, Dr. Harry Sag. And no question, over the past two weeks, I've had the hardest conversations I've ever had with families. But that reality makes this one all the more rewarding. When a COVID patient is released and ultimately joins the ranks of the recovered. Surviving this coronavirus is another thing this father and son have in common after Harry unknowingly infected his dad. Both of us knew, you know, where the road could go if things uh, uh, go downhill. We all are part of this group now of coronavirus survivors. How is it to be on the other side of this? First thing we feel is gratitude that we made it. And then the second thing is from those video games, it's almost like I have a cloak of invincibility, but the truth is we don't know that. Dr. Sag has dedicated much of his career to studying AIDS at the University of Alabama and sees questions about potential immunity through the lens of an infectious disease researcher. There are some viruses like measles, mumps, rubella, uh, that once you have it, you don't get it again. But there's other viruses like dengue fever that you can not only get a second time, but the second time, the infection and the disease is much worse. As I found after battling this coronavirus for weeks, and finally testing negative more than a month later, initial relief gives way to a new set of questions. We don't even know anyone who's had this virus and survived, you know, six months down the line. So we have no idea what it's going to look like to have survived this virus a year out from getting it or two years out. Fiona Lowenstein, who was hospitalized for COVID-19 back in March, started a support group for thousands of other coronavirus survivors. The number one kind of shared experience is that symptoms are lingering for a long time. There also are a lot of people having similar mental health issues. There's a lot of people saying, my employer doesn't understand why I'm still not feeling well. My family doesn't understand. My friends don't understand. And I feel really alone. So a recent article in the New York Times featuring stories of emboldened survivors throwing dinner parties and traveling left her wondering. I think that there were a lot of people who saw it and were like, who are these superheroes that are doing this? Because that's not me. I wear a mask all the time when I'm in public. Um, you know, my knuckles are still so dry from washing my hands all the time. Survivor Jacob Brown is still cautious after the virus took so much. I had like a part-time restaurant job. I lost that obviously. Um, but yeah, and then got laid off from the full-time job. You got all of the punches from COVID. Yeah, move home, back with the family. <laughs> this former New York software designer is now in North Carolina, helping his family's struggling toy business. He's hoping by donating blood and his antibody-rich plasma, some good can come from this. I have this rare opportunity to try and help with research or, you know, donate blood. You see having had COVID-19 as a rare opportunity? If I can help in some sort of ways save a life, like I'm glad to do it. Love it, love it. Dr. Michael Sag is also <laughs> donating yeah. blood plasma, and he and his son always suit up in full protective gear when they each volunteer to treat COVID-19 patients. Are you surprised that at this point we still know so little about this virus? No, it's, it's kind of the opposite. Um, I'm stunned that we know so much as we do. Let's look at AIDS. AIDS first was described in early 1981. It wasn't until two and a half years later that we found the cause, a virus. And it wasn't until a year after that that we had a test. And it wasn't until two or three years after that that we had our first drug. That's six, six years. We're less than six months into this. And while key questions about immunity remain, He's optimistic. My personal belief as a researcher, a virologist, an infectious disease provider, and a former patient, I really believe that the antibody will be protective and people will not 
be reinfected. And that gives me hope for a vaccine. So is it fair to say there's a cautious sigh of relief, maybe? I think that's a great way to put it.